my messages come through to her. Like if Ryan's texting me, it also comes to the phone at home. Ryan texts me. Where are you? Send nudes. (laughs) I assumed she was trying clothes on. on. And then Riley responds, but it's coming from me, right? She responds, what? Question mark. It's Riley. (laughs) And Ryan calls me and he's like, I'm panicking. I don't know what to do here. You're listening to the Laughing Couple Podcast with your hosts, Brittany and Ryan Ostafi. Join them weekly as they discuss topics such as relationships, kids, sex, parenting, all unfiltered and all with a healthy dose of laughter. Please welcome your hosts, Brittany and Ryan Ostafi. Slappy, slappy, make daddy happy. You know that a lot of people don't know what that's from? Well, if you don't know what slappy, slappy, make daddy happy is, it's from trolls. And if you don't know, it's kind of weird that we say And if you don't know. Now you know. Good luck saying the rest of that one. No, we will not be doing that. Good luck. Um, Set up on a tee. Home run. Okay. We're going to be diving into our experiences from New York, but Ryan has... Also, I feel like those bicycle Concrete caddies probably got so sick of that song. Up. It was on like every three seconds. There's nothing you can't do. I'm already sick of it from you saying it. Now you're in New okay, York. Okay, I want you to. Oh, I got the wax on me. You I know, want you to tell your story. New York is up. We're going to get into New York, but New York is a heartbeat. Like, what other city has theme songs? I mean, Viva Las Vegas. Besides that one. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. I feel like, and then maybe Paris is, would be like, hold me close and hold me well. How's that Paris's theme song? Because it's like on a, like a Paris bakery. Like, it's very like Paris. I can see it being paris It's not their theme song. But it's not song. their theme song. No, but fine. You're right. Anyways. Um, like New York has got a New York. Do you have any I it's love like, you in your annoying? It's got the John Travolta, not John Travolta, John... Uh, why am I saying John Travolta? I have no idea who you're trying Frank to say. Sinatra. Oh, okay. the yeah, Frank Sinatra. Okay. Yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah, John Travolta. <laughs> Hair Saturday spray. Saturday Night Fever. Oh God. <laughs> face Off. Great movie with Nicolas Cage. A little that face is off. a fabulous movie. I forgot People that movie. People don't existed. realize that John Travolta's done a lot of good stuff. They think they think of like you're the one that I want. Yeah. You are the one I want. <laughs> but like Pulp Fiction, Face Off. Old, Just old, to name two, old JT, because I can't think of any of the other ones. Old JT, that's good. J- old JT, yeah. Old, old Travolta. Wasn't he in um? What's that movie with Halle Berry? And it's like Halle Berry. Whoa, was she's naked. Password or like he's trying to put the password in, but it's not him. He's yeah. the bad guy in that movie. And Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman Jackman's is the movie. main guy. I forget what that movie's called. It's really it was good. good. Yeah, it was good. John Travolta is like underrated. Also into Scientology. He's a little. Well, I think. I think people's like idea of people John Travolta has been swayed a little, but you know what? And Scientology never really affected. Well, I guess it did affect Tom Cruise for a little while, but people <laughs> forgot about it. He, Tom Cruise was a wacko. He did jump on couches. He but a lot makes of the, entertaining movies. A lot of the lie. things, a lot of the things that he has said <laughs> that we thought were wacko ended up being like not so wacko. Like what? Not going to get into it. Okay, let's move on. Oh, yeah. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The dog chase of 2023. Oh, my God. Ryan told me this story this morning. This and it happened w- this it morning. It wasn't meant to be funny, but I was cackling. It's just like how you told it and what happened. And I understand that it could have ended like terribly, very, very terrible, but it's funny. I'm going to tell the story, but <laughs> Please do. you just set it up like it's funny. It, it, this is not a funny story. This okay. is like a PSA, public service announcement. Keep your dog on a leash. Keep your dog on a leash. Yeah. All right. So I'm doing my morning ritual walk. For those of you who don't know, I like walking in the morning, mm-hmm. whether that's before or after a workout or just the workout itself. I like being in my own space. I like being creative and thinking in the morning because kind of the best thing about war- walk, walking in the morning is you're kind of still sleeping. So you're dreaming. <laughs> Okay. But, but dream walking. Anyways, I'm dream walking. 
And I just get right outside of our neighborhood and I hear this woman kind of yell at her dog. Mm -hmm. Behind you, right? Behind me. Yeah. yeah, she's probably about 100 plus feet behind me. And I don't think anything of it because, man, it ain't my business. You know, yeah. not my pig, not my farm. Stay out of people's businesses. That's what I say. So anyways, I'm walking and I hear her yelling at this dog. And then I hear it again. And I think her voice is elevated. There's a like, there's a sense of like fear that is existing in her yelling. It's not like, get back here, Cletus. Right. You know, with the dog. I don't know. And it just Who named their dog. dog Cletus? Damn it, Cletus. Oh, look at our new puppy, little Cletus. Anyways. Little Cletus. So it's, oh. at, what? What did you just say? Did you just like, give Cletus the nickname Clit? Yeah, but because I shortened little it. Little Little Clit. Little Clit. Come here, little Clit. Here's a little Clitty about Jack and Diane. This is already so yeah. off the rails. This podcast is terrible Brought today. to you by Cleats. Anyways. <laughs> when I Cleat you, Cleat we Cleat. Okay, okay, anyways, Jesus. Um, I put my hands up on my hips. So, anyways. I, I thought you were going to say, I put my hands up on my cleat when you Cleat. Oh, I should have done that. Oh, can we just etch a sketch? I'll start over again. Opportunity. Uh, well, that's why you're the witty one in this relationship, and I'm the funny ha ha one. <laughs> Anywho, so I hear this sound from behind me, and I look again because now I now I not not I don't look again. I now look. Uh -huh. I commit to turning right, my right, head. Right, right, right. Before it was like a peripheral thing. And I see this woman who I'm who I have seen numerous times walking. Right. And she's got her little dog in her hands and she's got this big dog underneath her kind of barking. Sure. So I, I still don't think anything of it because in my mind, it's her, the owner, protecting her dog from, from a bigger her. dog that's being held by another owner. You know how that happens? Like two people are walking the dogs, the dogs see each other, they try to attack each so other. You just one's didn't... pulling back, the other one's like, oh, that's my dog, leave it alone. You didn't see the owner, you just figured like they were... The way that the fence line was, I oh. couldn't see if there was someone on the oh, other side okay. of it. got it, got it. So I proceeded to walk again. Good luck. <laughs> I Within about like seven <laughs> seconds, her tone the tonality in her voice mm -hmm. completely changed from like fear ish to i'm scared for my life now i'm thinking she's being uh, assaulted okay so i turn again and now i've got full view of her full view of the dog and recognize that there is not another human being there. okay so there no is owner. a wild loose dog trying to eat her dog <laughs> okay so i i do what anyone would do i yell is that not your dog? <laughs> to which she replies, no, help me. <laughs> so I come like running towards her. She comes running towards me. And in my head, I think to myself, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah, yeah. I don't own a dog, let alone a dog handler machine. This is a dog that's <laughs> big and burly and angry. All right. And all I've got is my hands. Right. But what I knew was I gotta my her. hands are probably a small I know, but they're not, not yours, your. they are my own. <laughs> what I knew is that my hands were probably more capable of her than her hands in this current situation because she was protecting her dog. Yeah. So I came and I approached the dog. Well, as I'm approaching the dog, the dog looks up and sees me. And I think to myself, oh, fuck. Kill John Lennon. <laughs> it was a thought in my head, like, what am I going to do? Now it's a thought in my head, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah, this dog is now looking dog. at me. It was a big dog, right? This was a big, angry dog. Mm -hmm. And so the dog starts coming at me now. And I'm like. <laughs> you use your dad voice. No, no, I didn't even get there. I'm uh -oh. like, oh, my God. Right? Well, this woman realizes that the dog's no longer on her <laughs> and says to me, Thanks. <laughs> And then runs away. And then like kind of walks away. And I'm sitting here thinking, I've now got this dog like staring me right in the eye. And so as she keeps coming closer to me, the dog keeps coming closer to me. We're all kind of converging at the same time. Yeah. And I threw out the only thing I know how to do. Your dad it, voice. Is my dad voice. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, stop right there. Enough. Enough. <laughs> and the dog dog. and the dog looks at me like, what the, who, the, who are you? <laughs> and I'm like, enough right now. Don't move. And so the dog's like, uh, I don't really know what's going on here, but who are you? You're not my owner. And pretty confident I could tear you apart. And still kind of testing you. But tested me. Yeah. So the dog then like ignores me and goes back to her. Oh no. And so now she's in a panic, but she's now past me. So she's past me. The dog's past me. And I go to the dog again. Stop right now. <laughs> the dog turns and looks at me super confused. Like, wait a second. Are you my owner? Like what's happening here? Right. 
But I, I couldn't break because yeah. I knew if I broke, the dog was going to attack me. Yeah. Right? So now I got the dog's attention. So now I start doing what, the, what an owner does and I start clapping my hands, right? Like, get over here, get yeah. over here. So the dog starts coming towards me and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, like, what if this dog realizes that I'm not an owner and that I'm the guy that's actually scared shitless right now? He going to attack me. So she peels off. She goes in the other direction. Now dog's coming to me. I'm walking the dog back. Well, now the dog is like, oh, this guy's, this guy's the alpha. I'm going to do what this guy does. <laughs> literally right? just make sure you look. <sighs> yeah. I was like, get in here. <laughs> you are being such a bad little boy. Let's go. So I'm now escorting the dog. Well, now the dog is walking away from me. Like, You're crying. Like the dog's walking away from me. Like I'm the dominant one. So I, oh, I got to do what this guy's telling yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can keep going, keep going. Get out of here. Get out of here. So then I'm walking him back closer to wherever his house is. And then I'll get, now, now we're far Which enough. you're assuming. You have no idea where this dog is. Well, I just lives. knew where the dog came from. Okay. The direction, right? Yeah. So now he's far enough away from me that I feel comfortable. And the one thing I learned about having a cat when I was younger <laughs> is never turn your back on an animal that's angry at you. Because okay. the second you do, they're going to see that and they're going to pounce on it. Sure. But I knew I was far enough away from this dog. So all of a sudden I start walking the other direction and all I hear is click, click, click. Click, 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 click. His nails are coming closer to me. I'm like, oh, shit. So I turn. <laughs> Stop it right now. Dog stops in his tracks. And I'm like, oh, okay, good. So then he's now he's now stopped. I now walk across the street. I'm walking and I'm looking. I'm like, if this dog decides it's, it's go time, yeah, yeah. I need an exit I need strategy. Exits. So I started looking at all the green boxes and where I could jump that's a little bit higher than him. Yeah. He could probably jump up there, but he'd get a swift kick to the <laughs> face if he did, right? Okay. I'm literally now in my position where I'm, I'm going to fuck this dog up. Yeah. As soon as I get on that green box, I'm not going to be afraid anymore. I'm just going to kick, kick, kick. <laughs> Right. So anyways, <laughs> anyways, all of a sudden I hear this dog just start oh barking God. and I'm like, oh shit. Like I'm it's ready to go. I turn back to see what's going on and I see this man unsuspectedly running. And then all of a sudden he goes from he's a jogging. Runner. Like he's a jog, like he's a runner. He's he, a track yeah. star. He goes from light jog to full fucking sprint. <laughs> and this dog is chasing him down the street. <laughs> And I'm sitting it's there. It's really not funny. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh my god! Like I, I just passed the buck over to this unsuspecting man who is now being chased by this like Rottweiler. I don't even know what kind of dog oh it was. God. It might have been a bulldog. It could have been a Rottweiler. It Either was way, a it was it was big and it was scary and it was full of muscle. The thing was just yeah, massively yeah, yeah. muscular, like very jealous of his six pack. Anyways, this guy's running. Finally, the dog's like, oh fuck it, that guy's fast. And he's running past me. He takes his headphones on. And he's like, uh, what did he say? He's like, nothing. He's like, nothing motivates you more. Yeah. Nothing motivates you more than a, nothing motivates you more in the morning than a dog chasing you. I'm like, have a good day. <laughs> so in the course of like two, three minutes, three people in the neighborhood almost got attacked by this dog. I think we have no idea. No I should check the, the Facebook is. group because I'm should sure. probably have put out a public service announcement. I'll in do that later. Be like, hey, heads up. There is a dog. It's <laughs> roaming the street and it's pissed. It's had three victims. It's lost all three of them. It's like a great white shark looking for a seal. Eventually, it's just going to like shark breach, yeah. come out of the water, rip your leg off. Yeah, God, I was laughing so hard this morning Anyways, when you told me this. <laughs> it was not funny. It was like very intimidating. And then I thought to myself, you know what? If I've ever questioned, if I've ever questioned what I would do in the event that something came after my kids or my wife, it's no longer a question because yeah. this was a perfect female stranger who I don't know, don't even know what her name is. Mm -hmm. If she's a listener, hey, uh, don't know who she is. I've yeah. seen her on the street many a times. And my first reaction was better me than her, which is, a, <sighs> which is actually quite stupid. It is stupid. It's a stupid thing to do. Be like, oh, listen, don't I don't need hero. these hands. Yeah, don't I don't be I don't need hero. these hands. Hope your, hope your little dog's okay. I, I don't need my hard, hands. I think it's though, like in the moment too, right? Like you have this... You're a good person, so you have this innate feeling to want to help your fellow neighbor, right? Like, it's not like you're going to be like, well, good luck to you, and then walk the other way. I think most people, I would hope, would have that, like, oh, let me see if I can help, right? I don't think I would walk away from, like, a dog, but I, I, again, like, <clears throat> walking towards it would would be dumb. Either way, it you doesn't know, matter. Without, like, Keep your dogs on your leash. Without crossing a line and having a discussion that I don't want to have about... I will say this. There's a part of me that's very traditional mm -hmm. in the sense that when a woman's in trouble, you help them, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. If it was another man and he was dealing with that, I would look over him like, you want some help fucking that guy up? <laughs> 
And he might say, yeah, bro. And we would do that. But when it's a, when it's a woman, my instincts are to go and protect that, that woman. Yeah. No, you're a good person. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, hold on. Let's, I wrote some stuff down. I know you did, but we honestly, we did so many things in New York. We crammed everything. I don't even know. Like people are like, well, what did you just do this day? All of the days bl- blend together for me because we did so much shit. But you know what? I wrote down. What did you write down? I wrote down a couple of things. Oh, no. And the one first thing I wrote down is. Are these, stupid, boop, thi- beep, beep, beep. Are these are stupid things Ryan said on his trip. But where, I were, knew this was coming. where were we when you said that? People, people. Yeah, when you were like the loud robot and you were like, I didn't mean it to be that loud. Do you remember when you said that? You don't remember being a loud robot? And I was like, holy shit, you were so loud there. Yeah, I think we were on that rooftop having a Oh my God, you were so funny. I was laughing so hard. But the one that I want to talk about is, so we found found this speakeasy in Grand Central Station, okay? And it's called uh, the Campbell. Campbell. Yeah, that's what I said, the Campbell. Uh, It sounds like you're saying Campbell. No, it's called the Campbell. Campbell, it's off of like... uh, what it's awesome. That? What's that? Vanderpump. Vander or something. No, no, no. It's that uh, um, people were saying that Gossip Girl was filmed Anyways. part of it. It doesn't matter. It's really, really cute. It's an awesome speakeasy. It's literally in Grand Central Station. Great history, by the way. I don't know if you read up on the history on it. No, but you can tell It was me. an office. It was it was someone's private office. Oh, I think you told me this. Yeah. Anyways, Anyways. It's great. We were... It was a nightcap for us, so we were already like in the bag. And we're there, and uh, I ordered... Ryan ordered something and what I What did I do there that was stupid? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, I'll take an Aperol spritz. Oh my God. And uh Ryan didn't hear me like he no, ordered I heard his. You. Hold on. I'm like, I'll take an Aperol spritz, but he didn't hear me say I'm also going to take a water. So what happened was, is he heard me say, I'll take an Aperol spritz, and then the bartender puts a water in front of me and he's like what? I'm like, because yeah, I yeah, asked yeah. you, I asked you, did you want to do one more drink yes. before we left? Correct. You said, yes, I didn't want another drink. You said you wanted another drink. So I ordered a drink and now I'm thinking I'm the only oh, one she drinking. She only got a water. Like, fuck this. Yeah. So I was like, so I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. I'm like, uh, he's like, well, you ordered an Aperol spritz. I'm like, it's code for water. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, like it's just bartender lingo when you don't want to feel pressured into having another drink. If your friends hear you order in a water, they're like, oh, you're like, you're being a little bitch. So you just order a, an Aperol spritz and the bartender knows like, I got you. It's a code. I'll give you this a water a without North you saying American it. This is American universal went on. code. I had you going for so long. And then finally the bartender brought over my an drink. Aperol spritz. He's like, here's the Aperol spritz. And I was I'm like, like you he was like, fuck bitch. you. <laughs> I was like, because we had previously, the conversation before was, could we be spies? And I was like, I think I'd be a really good spy. And he was like, no, you wouldn't. And I said, yes, I would. I think I could like tell a story. And he was like, no, you wouldn't. And then I just had him going for three minutes, like totally infatuated with this story. And then after you were like, fuck, you would be a good spy. Yeah. Well, here's <laughs> That's the thing. really funny. There, this is like. This is a good question to ask your spouse. Do you think your spouse could be a spy? spy? (laughs) Because it's not like you can act like nobody's questioning your ability to act. Being a spy, (laughs) acting is probably 30% of the gig. No, you, you I have to have a backstory. More. You have to have like you, again acting. If not you just, have a character, no, you know their story. The character development needs to be so in depth. You'd have to remember everything that you said, which means you'd good. have to be a good liar, a good I actor. Could do it. What does that mean, Brittany? I could do it as an actor. You think you could have a full background story? A thousand percent. It's like method acting. I absolutely could. I could totally do that. I feel like we need to have a competition. Like we should have somebody write in and we'll do characters and then we'll do like a full monologue interview and who, who did it better. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It was so, it was so funny, but you do have to go check out the Campbell because it's a really cool place. It does look like in the first season of Gossip Girl, there's a bar that they go to. I don't know if they based it off of it or if this was actually, they didn't base it off of it. This thing's been there for a hundred years. No, no, no. But I just don't know if they actually filmed there or if it was like a set that made it look like it because Gossip Girl is based in New York. Gotcha. 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 I don't, I don't watch that show. Never have, but, uh, good. I hear it's Real juicy. Good. It's so so let's talk about um, let's talk about New York for a little bit. Yeah. Now, if you guys have never been to New York City, here's the revolu- revolution, revelation, revelation, revelation that we had. 
we um well we'll talk about the 9-11 memorial because that thing was really really heavy yeah um but after that because it was so heavy we needed a break yeah. we needed a mental break <laughs> and so in the financial district it's right near the water you get to sit down there's like a little yacht club i guess uh well there were some sizable yachts there mm-hmm. uh, we weren't invited just to be clear we weren't invited to some yacht club no we no no it, it's all yachts. open like it's it's in the um What's it? What's that place called? The something market. The district. The, Liber- the district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The district. So, anyways, we're sitting there having lunch, having a good time, and just so you guys know, we live in southern Ontario, and the biggest city in southern Ontario is Toronto, and we don't like Toronto. Yeah. We are anti-Toronto <laughs> people, and the reason because the reason is because it takes forever to get into Toronto, it takes forever to get out of Toronto. But Brittany and I have never stayed in Toronto. Like we've never visited Toronto for the for a period of three or four days. To be like, let's experience yeah, Toronto. Let's like experience we'll go Toronto. for concerts or like birthday party, whatever. So we're sitting there and we're looking at New York City and we're like looking at the landscape and all that fun stuff, the hardscape, cityscape. <clears throat> and I thought, you know what? I bet you any money, whether it's Toronto, <laughs> whether it's Chicago, whether it's any major city center, it's probably the same experience as New York. Yeah. Right, New like, York is just like the mag, like the, the mag, the, the mega, mega, the mega, the mega, mega what? The mega dick, the big old dick, a big old dick. No, New York is New York. New York's New York, and it's got this like idea. It's got this heartbeat. It's got its own theme song. Did we try but, to do a New York accent? Anyways, but the idea is, it's in, <laughs> you don't have to go. I don't think you have to go to New York City. Just to be honest, I, I would go back to New York City multiple times. Oh, yeah. I loved it, and I think we could accomplish the same things in Toronto. With the Canadian dollar versus the U.S. dollar, obviously removing all of the like um, you can't landmarks see the Statue like, of Liberty yeah, in yeah, Toronto. Just entertainment wise, for right. sure. But entertainment, it's got the theater district, <laughs> it's got the it's got the eateries, yes, it's got the bars, it's got everything. It does. So I think every major city center has those same things. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about our experience in New York City. We did find this place. It was called something Loco. What is it? Yeah, Toro Loco. Toro Loco. We had the bottomless margarita brunch and we were like so excited. We did some research and like, I don't love tequila. Ryan doesn't love tequila, but like we like a, like a good margarita where with like good, good tequila where you can't like fully taste the tequila, like fresh lime we juice, switched, soda, whatever. We so, switched to all his mimosas. So they give us these, these margaritas yeah. and Ryan, like, I thought that you were being like a wimp about it. And I didn't like, or I'm like, Oh, you didn't just like, I tried it. It was, Oh my God. So strong. It was so strong, so strong. But like, I couldn't, we were fucked up off the first, like I got buckled from, but I mean like one margarita. I was like, how much tequila is in this? I ended up like, because Ryan was like, I'm going to switch to the mimosa. Like, I can't do it because he didn't even drink it. And now, and I was like, oh, mine's probably better because it wasn't blended. Was worse. And so then I was like, oh. Just to be clear, this restaurant's phenomenal. No, no. Like, oh, oh, my God. The, we, don't like, drink, we don't like tequila. If you let's, like margaritas. Let's be very clear. This will, restaurant, highly recommend yes. 10 out of 10. Amazing we got, food. We got destroyed. We got mangled. Mangled. In an hour and a half, oh we got mangled. So I mangled. even said to Brittany in the middle of all of the chaos, I'm like, my face is... My face is doing things I don't think it should be no, doing. Like, I feel so drunk in my face right Man, now. Yeah, like my face is drunk. Yeah, it was so funny. Brittany, when she decided that she was not, like when I got my unlimited mimosas and I switched and she tried my mimosa, she's like, I'm going to do that too. But then I felt but guilty she, because you just exchanged your margarita. So I was like, I'm going to down half of this and then I'm going to discreetly pour out. She pours this thing <laughs> out on the side of our table, on the ground. We're outside on a patio. So it doesn't, it doesn't sound as bad. It's not like she just threw it on the restaurant. Yes, but it was in all just fairness, like a little bit. She did throw it in the restaurant. No, I she, didn't. She's it was pouring along it the off fence. the side of the table on <laughs> like the fence line. And about two minutes later, she looks up and there's like a camera. <laughs> directly uh, over top of her staring at her like we didn't see you do that Brittany bitch oh my god it was so embarrassing anyways we got buckled but here's where this story gets awesome we get absolutely buckled Mm -hmm. at noon yeah and we decide hey there's this show called sleep 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 No no more that Brittany was talking about and I had never heard of it and she didn't really hear about it either I had a lot of people recommend it a lot of people recommended (laughs) sleep no more now if you haven't been to New York and you haven't heard of sleep no more which literally came out in like 2014 2016 everyone was ripping me apart when I talked about it on my TikTok they're like this is minimum 10 years old yeah we're not gonna we're not gonna spoil anything for you but we are gonna help you out right 
Because keep in mind, number one, we were buckled. Yeah. Number two, we didn't know what we were getting into. And number three, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's an immersive off-Broadway like experience. It's like so, Macbeth, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's parallels Macbeth and... Um, uh, Rebecca from Hitchcock. But so listen, you don't. I've never seen. I don't know who Rebecca is. You and do I don't, not. And I do not know what. Mm-hmm. Mac, you I don't, don't need, need to know. Is you don't Macbeth need to know. a character in Macbeth? Because that would be the only Mac character. Yeah, I Yeah, like know. Macbeth is from Shakespeare, so, so it doesn't what, matter. You don't, don't know. You don't need to know those two to go to this. Like, if you do know, there are some paralleled scenes that are just like an interpretation of it. It doesn't matter. So when you go. Um, you submit your electronics. So they lock it up in code check. There is no phones. There's nothing you can like keep with you. And here's our suggestion. If you're going with somebody, go. No, and let's just talk. Let's not give the suggestions. Let's give, no, I'm let's say- give a what happened while we were there. No, because we can talk about it, but I want to tell them like the process, like, Okay, so you want to just, you are going to spoil it then. Well, no, we're not going to spoil anything because we didn't think you, see anything. I don't think you can spoil it because there's just so much going so, on. if you guys have seen the movie Eyes Wide Shut with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman back when they were married, the big ooh mm-hmm. was that there was a scene where she was naked. But that wasn't the whole thing. The whole idea was it was this married couple who came in on this like somewhat felt like demonic little voyeuristic experience where there was lots of orgies going on. We came into this place not knowing what we were doing. We handed our money over. We handed our cell phones over. We handed all of these things over. After like after the two hundred dollar rickshaw ride. Yeah, we'll get into that. Don't do a rickshaw in New York City, ever. please. Ever, never, never. It ain't <gasps> worth it. The music's not even that great. Yeah. Anyways, so we get in there and like we're handing over things, and it's like, yeah, sure, here, coat check. I'm like, Ooh, I would scary. never give my cell phone, no. which got my visa and all these things in it. But I'm like, you know what? We're buckled. Mm-hmm. Freaking Coco Locos. So we get there, they let us in. The guy's like, oh, we, it's the show starts. We had just ordered drinks. Then they're like, last call. Mm. I'm like, oh, and the guy's like, don't worry, don't worry. You got like you a half an it. hour. Take your time. So we take our time. We have our drinks. Next thing we know, we're in this elevator and this guy is in character. And the girl. Now, and she's like, fortune favors the bold. Yeah. And we were like, okay. they, We didn't realize they're in character. So they're talking to us in Shakespearean. Hold on. Also, everyone's wearing a fucked up bird mask. Bird mask. Okay. Like a bird skull mask. <laughs> so wild. I'm looking at Brittany in a bird skull mask. She's looking at me in a bird skull mask. We're buckled from Coco Locos. I'm staring Toro at this world. Locos. Toro Locos. I'm staring at this woman who's in full character. Yeah. And it's talking like, stop to us. talking. Fortune favors the bold. Opens the elevator and is like, goodbye. And then this guy comes and he starts giving us the rules of how this thing gets played out. Yeah. I don't even know what's happening. So I'm not listening to a word he's saying. But there aren't really any rules. He was like, go explore. Explore. They kept just being like, you know, fortune favors the bold and like blah, blah, blah. If something pulls you, the power of Christ compels you. Yes. Come. Go. Follow it. Follow it. Be yourself. So So we get out of the elevator and we are like, okay, there's a purpose here. Maybe it's like an escape room. So we start going into all the rooms. Looking for clues. Looking up the rooms. And like. I broke a door. (laughs) Did you? I, the door wouldn't open up. I broke it, remember? And we ended up in a closet. <laughs> and the door opens up, but it opens up from the other side. But I didn't know it was a door. And, and you're like, it's not opening. I'm like, yeah, it okay. is. And I just broke it. So and we're in a closet. Anyways, it's, it's mangled. Honestly, though, like I will say this. It is the most insane set I've ever seen. Like there are four different floors. It's a hotel. So basically they're like, here's your hotel key, go explore. And so we're walking around and there's like dozens of rooms. Each floor is something different. There's a tailor shop. There's a taxidermist. There's a children's infirmary. There's an entire floor that's a cemetery with fucking fog. It was insane. Incredible. Six floors. Honestly, it was wild. Okay. Amazing. But this is where we kind of got like we missed the mark a little bit because we missed the directions. Well, you know what? It wasn't just us, though. Like when I was talking about this online, they're like, you're right. Like if the hosts would have said like instead of encode fortune fables, the bold like there's multiple actors within this. Okay. I would say there's about 10 to 15 people acting. Okay. And they each have a storyline. So they're traveling all throughout the different rooms. They're doing their thing. I also learned that they run through the play, uh, two times. So if you've witnessed something twice from your character, you've already seen the play oh, twice. Didn't know this. See, like again, they don't tell you. Didn't know this. So what we would suggest is 
go with somebody. Go with a group. Go with a group. But listen, this is going to get really trippy. Do not experience like right when they open the elevators, disperse, don't go together. And it's going to be scary because it's really fucking dark and there's things everywhere. But then go experience this on your own. Follow a character. Okay. Follow the character throughout because every, like there's groups of people like running and following these characters, witnessing what they're doing in all of their scenes. And like, sometimes they're alone. Sometimes they're acting with other characters. And like, once you kind of get an idea of what they're doing, you can like piggyback onto another character and follow them. Say through right? it. And like at the end, like at one part they're they all kind of come together and they're doing this like dance scene or whatever, Multiple parts. but you can like, once you kind of have an idea of the storylines and, and you follow them, take a second and then after go explore the rooms, like on your own, because we missed the storylines. We would come in and there was like fucking orgy. Apparently there's this like witch rave with blood that we missed. Like it Honest was wild. God, I, I came into one room. There was people dancing. Here's what I didn't, here's what I didn't know. Because I didn't know that there were you were supposed to follow characters, all I saw was like twenty bird mask people running towards running after this character, yeah. following this character. And I came into the, this one room and this dude was in a bathtub and he came out of the bathtub all cock and balls ready. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on in here? <laughs> and there's like twenty people around this man. And I'm thinking, what are we watching here? Yeah, it was alarming because we just weren't prepared. We weren't prepared. But like after you do all of your and there's things an orgy. and you explore the hotel, like after you've watched the scenes, go explore the hotel because again, the sets are incredible. Then you can also leave anytime. We like left. literally the girl was like, if you ever feel uncomfortable, you can take a break, which would have been our first like red flag. And there were many times where I was like, I need a fucking beat because this is a lot right now. We left. We did not we even left. finish the damn thing. But if we were to do it again, and I honestly feel like I would go with another group of people, I would go again by myself, figure it out. But then after you guys have done your thing, say, let's meet back in the bar in two hours or whatever. And then you can have a drink and you guys can discuss what you, what you saw, your storylines, because they're inevitably going to cross over. And I think it'll be really cool. It would be an interesting conversation to be like, oh yeah, well I followed this person. And then while well, my person came this way. And I just think that would be such an interesting experience. Like it's immersive. I learned a lot about myself. But we didn't know any of this. So it was like, honestly, I was like, I feel like we might die. Like if someone murdered me, I'd, they'd be like, it's part of the show. Like I had nightmares about it. <laughs> There were people, I guarantee people go in there and they bring their partner and they fornicate through. There are cameras like, and security everywhere. I can guarantee it because like, here's what I discovered about myself. And I, there's like a two parter and I haven't actually discussed this with you. So I don't know what your take is on this, but when I was in there, mm-hmm. I felt like I was witnessing something I wasn't supposed to witness. Like yeah, but I, it almost I, like heightens your weird like sense of like but, sexual energy. But this is what I'm getting at. It's like weird. I I wanted to leave. Yeah. Like I I thought I'm not supposed to be yeah. here. I'm watching something I'm not supposed to be. Like there's a whole group of people that knows what's happening. Right. I'm not one of them. And I got in on here accidentally. Yeah. And it was scary. And I wanted to leave. Yeah. And. And it's funny because we were talking to another group who also left and they were saying like, oh, you know, this thing made me so horny. And then all of a sudden I'm like, where's the sex and where's this and where's that? And we were laughing about it. And then we found out afterwards that there that was there like was, a full orgy, not like actual. There was. And here's the weirdest part about it for me. This is what I haven't talked to you about. When I found out that there was an orgy and when I found out that there, it did get way darker than what we even anticipated. Yeah. I now want to go back. <laughs> What does that say about you? But isn't that weird? Like in the moment I was like, because this it's is like a- the forbidden. It's, it's like, like this- you're living in this weird forbidden dimension and like there are no rules and it seems like just like this elevated sense of like sexual energy and there like is. dark. It's, it's, it's fucked. It's like weird, dark sex, sex energy. <laughs> It's like, you know, because there's one room where there's a bed and there's blood all over the bed. You know that something bad has happened and that something bad is going to happen or is happening right now because it's just weird. The whole thing's weird. But at the same token, you know that all of the characters, all the character stories that we did run into when we were seeing people yeah. run after them, they were all sexual in yeah, nature. Like there really was a were. high tension of sex. Mm-hmm. And like, for me, I'm like, I need, I don't know what's going on and I need to escape this Mm -hmm. place. 
I was going to, I was going to stay the whole time because I thought, oh, wow, Britney's really artsy. She did, you know, she did like university art. She's probably thinking this is cool. Drama and theater. She probably thinks this is cool. I think this is lame as fuck, but I'm going to be supportive. And then you come up to me and you're like, I want to leave. I'm like, let's go. I was scared. I didn't know what the fuck was happening. But I will say this in the weird, weird way. When I found out that it was way worse than what we experienced, I want to go back and see it. I wanted to go back once I learned what you could experience, like following the characters and like having that immersive experience and really understanding the storylines, which we weren't told. I think we would have had a way different. I think it still would have been like royally fucked up, but I think we would have had a better understanding and a better purpose because you can't just say like you, even if you say your purpose is just to explore, there is nothing else. Like no one told us like not to look for clues. Like what is the deal here? Do you know what I mean? If they would have been like, please follow a character. I just think there needs to be some ground rules so that people can get more out of the experience. The way that my mind works, the way that your mind works is when I don't know what's happening, I try to find out what's happening and solve it. Like I'm a fixer. I fix things that are broken and that show was broken to me and I couldn't make it make sense. We ended up sitting down in a room because it was wide open. I'm like, I just need to sit down and try to figure this out. And within five minutes, like 20 characters, 10 characters came in and all these storylines emerged right in front of us. Now everyone knew what was happening around us. We're sitting there like, (laughs) So uh-huh. that guy's gay and he's pretending to. That's the one he loves. He loves and that's that guy. The affair, but, he, but he can't show he it. He can't show he's that. Here, and yeah. that girl's here and she's there. And then I'm like, oh, I, I there's a storyline. And then within like 10 minutes, they all were like in other rooms. I'm like, uh, now I'm back in this room by myself. Yeah, it was, anyways, it was wild. Anyways, anyway, we took I highly recommend long. it. It's It was weird. It was it, interesting. But if you do go to New York and you do get a chance to see that, be prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, be prepared for it. <laughs> hey, by the way, New York, edibles. You can do oh, edibles in God. New York. <laughs> Everywhere you are is a place that sells edibles. Yes. And if you're going to do Eyes Wide Shut or what, oh, it, what, is it, what was it called? Sleep, Sleep No, no more. more. I would not do that. On or edibles. do it. Just depends on how, like, make sure you don't have a bad trip or that would be, like, terrifying. You typically don't get bad trips from from marijuana. Absolutely, you could. Oh, you could. Anyways. uh, It was a lot. I don't think we have time to to discuss full 9-11 memoriam. No, we don't. But also an incredible experience. You need, like, four to six hours to really, like, immerse yourself in that. Um, I will say this, like, Ryan and I, everybody remembers where they were. For like when it happened, our generation and older, it's definitely weird experiencing every because you really are like dove in, like you dive right into everything well, again. You're, you're there, and yeah, just you're all where of the, the voice towers were standing, the voice recordings of all of the voicemails. Like it's a lot, but it was interesting to experience it as an adult versus when it was a kid because we didn't like I didn't know. Like I remember being like, okay, two planes crashed in a tower. Like uh, that's that's awful, but I would like. The, the impact wasn't there and like being in New York and like, it, it's just, it's incredible to see. So if you, if you do go to New York, it's definitely something don't, that we've don't taken skip away. That. Yeah. It was, don't it was wild because you know, they, they, they coined it perfectly. There was before nine 11 and then there was after nine yeah. 11, like life existed before it and life exists after it. And to be there and to, and to feel the energy that was there mm-hmm. to feel the heaviness that was there to hear the voices of the moms and the dads and the brothers and the sisters and the best friends talk yeah. about and just their all of the ones artifacts that, that they kept there. was wild. I'm like, what it would have taken to organize all of these items was just and so impressive. Anyways, it did an amazing job. We on could it. talk we about highly, that highly, 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 highly recommend it. Um, but we don't have enough time to talk about anything else. I know we, we just, talked <laughs> for about sleep no more for a long time. Forever. But can we quickly? Can we quickly say? What happened? You can do whatever you want. No, I just like, I forgot about this, but what had happened was, is that, um, we got lost somewhere and I said, where are you? Not in the, not in the museum. We were somewhere else. Oh, 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 we were in century 21 and we split up on like, it's a clothing store and, uh, like design designer brands and stuff. So Ryan went to, yeah, Ryan went to, Ryan went to one floor and I went to another floor and I forgot about this. So my old phone Riley has for, um, like kids tube and music and whatever. Um, but it's still connected to the cloud. So like my messages come through to her, like if Ryan's texting me, it also, comes to the phone at home if she's in wi-fi right for the iphones so 
<laughs> Ryan texts me, where are you? Okay. And I'm an aunt. Was it all one message? Oh yeah. Where are you? Send nudes. <laughs> and, I assumed she was trying clothes hold on. on. And then Riley responds, but it's coming from me, right? She responds, what? Question mark. It's Riley. <laughs> And Ryan calls me and he's like, I'm panicking. I don't know what to do here. What the fuck? And I see the message, right? Like I look down. I'm like, I didn't write that. Oh my God. Like Riley wrote it. So then when we got home, Ryan like concocted this whole thing. And then he was like, you know, I was texting your mom. And like that one day that you texted me and I was like, how rude. And then it and it like auto-corrected to nude. <laughs> She was like, okay, dad. And and then you were like, uh, because like she, she was, she left me and like, I was like, oh, your mom's being so rude. I don't know where she is. What a little stinker. But then autocorrect was like, send nudes. And I was like, that's not what I said. I'm convinced it was your mom that responded. It's not because we asked Riley and she was like, yeah, that was me. Anyways. um, Just be careful. If you got your eye cloud on. We learned, we learned. The hard way so, that if I want nudes, I have to send it through WhatsApp. Yeah, he's like, go download that app. I'm like, okay. Download WhatsApp and make sure it's not on Riley's phone and then send more nudes. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I hope you guys have a lovely Tuesday and uh, we'll see you next week. And for week. you lovely ladies out there who are married to your lovely husbands. Send the nudes. O- <laughs> the odd nude picture is not a bad idea. Send if away. If you're comfortable. Peace out. A town. Boop, boop, boop. Austin. I'm a saint from my soul.